are back again with an amazing session and in this session we are going to learn about assembly and we are going to assemble all the parts which we made till this session right which includes piston head wrist pin connecting rod crankshaft um, oil tray and cylinder block as well these six parts which are going to combine with each other and by combining these which we are going to make an inline four cylinder engine and yeah with that let's just start making it right i already showed you how answers assembly interface looks like in today's video i'm going to explain you every single mate as well so first of all as usual when you open assembly it will ask you to import some of your pre-designed models right so let's just select all of them and it will import one by one all the parts right starting with this connecting rod crankshaft cylinder block oil tray piston head and wrist pin right there you go now we can just connect them one by one of course we'll be needing these three uh, three times more right so let's just include them first of all let's just right click on this and make it float I already shared the concept of fix and float if you haven't checked that video then just check it out link is in the end does description and that video if I remember was crankshaft I guess so I can just check that out now with it let's just move it over here and what we can do we can just fix this one over here because of course cylinder block will be fixed right and for the very start let's just go to mate let me show you how you can connect this tray with this cylinder block right so we are going to go with the first mate which we have which is coincident mate right which basically connects two surfaces together two edges together or two vertices together right just click on this coincident mate and choose this surface which you want to connect with this surface just like that right now if you see these two surfaces are actually connected with each other right if I click on OK again click on OK then over here as you can see we can just move it some somewhere around anywhere but the condition is that it this surface will always be connected to that surface right as you can see there is some gap between them from this view but if I just showed you from the top it basically is bit far away from it that's why it is looking like that there is a gap but if i showed you from the standard view like from here then you can see i can move it anywhere but the gap between them will be zero right which means they are connected right let's just keep it over here and to avoid this motion itself as well what we can do we can just simply you know connect this surface with this surface or we can connect those holes as well so let's try connecting these holes go to mate now we are going to use the second mate which we have the most important concentric mate right in this concentric mate we are going to make this circle over here and this circle over here circular hole concentric with each other basically both of their centers will lie on the same axis right that means concentric and as you can see we have this over here right now if i click on okay still it can move but if you try to understand it basically can rotate right with that circular axis as the axis of rotation it can rotate if i try to show you then see if i try to rotate it it can rotate right about that axis because that only that axis is combined right if you try to understand it practically then just imagine that you have screwed one screw over here but all the others are not screwed right so you can move around that screw axis just like that now we have to uh, you can just make a concentric two more holes any two more holes then it will be fixed right if I just go to concentric again and I choose this hole over here and I choose the bottom hole and there you can see if I click on OK now you cannot move it is completely restricted right just like that 
these are the two mates which actually use a lot one is the concentric mate and one is the coincident mate right now what we are going to do we are going to connect all these other parts as well so for that i'm going to need to make this part transparent so just click on transparent over here and over here now i'm going to connect my crankshaft so for that just go to mate go to concentric and just choose this surface over here and choose the surface over here right now as you can see the axes are actually connected with this circular axis now to make it like come over here what we can do we can just simply you know connect all these parts together as well with that it will just come into its position so for that First of all, let's connect these three parts, the main piston, connecting rod and wrist pin, right? Just click on this portion over here and this one over here, click on OK. Now, as you can see, it is concentric with this one. Now we can just connect this surface with this portion over here. Then it will be in the middle, right? Coinci coincident mate will be there. Click on OK again. Now we can just put the wrist pin, which is over here. If I just select this circular face and this circular face, it will be there, right? And to completely insert it in, just click on this surface and select the surface. They will be coincident automatically, right? Just click on OK. There you go. Your piston is assembled, assembled. your crankshaft is good to go. But just to make it over in the middle position, what we can do, we can just simply click on this piston and click on this circular surface over here right so that the piston will fit inside that cylinder right and that's why I told you to make sure that dimensions are pretty similar right otherwise it will look odd and won't work sometimes as well so to avoid that just make sure you are good with dimensions and then you just come into assembly and assemble them right now as you can see they are co concentric but now what we can do we can just simply you know connect this portion from here to this portion right which is actually there to connect with the connecting rod now they are concentric but i want to make this connecting rod in the middle of it right so for that i'm going to choose this one and this one over here as you can see now they are connected but i want it in the middle so it actually has a gap of 0.2 from each side so i can just choose this new mate which we have the distance mate right if i click on this distance mate and choose a distance of 0 0.02 i want to flip the dimension yeah right now it is in the middle so just click on ok and there you go right now if i make this upper body cylinder block transparent as well then you can see how it moves right as you can see the piston is connected with the cylinder now if i try to move this one you can see just as simple as that you can just make all those other pistons as well connected to it let me just do it one by one and before that what i'm going to do i'm going to insert them once more Click on cylinder piston head, wrist pin, and connecting rod. Click on open and just import them once. And now, what you can do, you can just simply now copy all these three. Just click on this piston head connecting rod first. Click on control C, control V, control V. Similarly, choose piston head. Control C, Control V, Control V. Similarly, wrist pin as well. Now we have all the parts, right? Now we can assemble them. So again, go to Mate. And first of all, just connect these three together. So let's start with this one. Let's connect this connecting rod with this one. Click on OK. You can choose OK from here or there as well. Up to you now let's select this surface with this one 
connecting rod is done now and actually as you can see i am not selecting the mates now because when you select two circular surface now solidworks already automatically detects that you want to make it make them concentric but if you still want to change it to let's say somewhat like tangent or something then you can just change the mate from the left side okay but automatically it's concentric right similarly for the if you choose two flat surfaces coincident mate will be the automatic mate which will be selected right so that's why i'm not choosing them if i just click on this circular surface and choose this circular surface as you can see automatically concentric is selected right like that you can just uh, take less time to connect them click on okay choose this flat surface and choose this flat surface and as you can see coincident is selected click on okay there you go one is done let's just connect those two as well let's select this circular surface let's select this circular surface over here click on okay choose this flat surface and choose this flat surface you want to connect both of them together right so that it will be in the middle position just click on okay again choose this wrist pin click on the center click on okay again same flat surface it's pretty simple right as i told you from the very start if you try to understand these things by practical examples it's quite simple now if i just again click on this curved surface click on this one there you go right click on okay choose the surface and choose this surface on the starting you might not be this much quick so just don't worry it will come with time with practice right click on okay and just select these two surfaces to connect together and click on okay now as you can see we are done with three piston assemblies now we can just connect them on the crankshaft right to do that again go to mate let's start with this piston circular surface and the cylinder circular surface click on ok after that you can just select this circular surface of the connecting rod and this surface of the crankshaft after that you have to specify the gap between them or you can actually avoid that because as you can see this piston will make this thing actually in the middle so you can just avoid the gap thing now you can just delete this one and just move on to the next mate from here to here right click on ok and let's connect this one to this one over here right just like that similarly to this one click on ok and let's select this one and this one together right there you go you have the whole assembly done now if i try to move it then you can see the all the piston assembly will work just fine if i show you from this view if i try to rotate this as you can see our pistons are moving just fine now we can just go for the other parts which are actually uh, this the top walls over there cylinder head will be there right and a lot of pipe sections are also there we are going to make them one by one in the upcoming sessions so till that i think you learned something new and you enjoyed this lecture yeah that's it for today's video thank you so much guys